My name is Jeffrey Cam, and I'm the host of Digital Oil and Gas, the podcast that looks at the impact of digital technology on the oil and gas industry. If you want to discuss this week's topic further, or just stay in touch, you can always reach me at Jeffrey Cam on Twitter or at JeffreyCam.com. This podcast is entitled How to Successfully Introduce Artificial Intelligence into Oil and Gas. As the oil and gas industry slowly explores AI solutions, it will have to confront some critical management issues that hinder faster and more impactful adoption. The industry is curious about AI. I've been invited by COSIA, that's the Canadian Oil Sands Innovation Alliance, to participate in a panel discussion on the role of AI in oil and gas. Being a practical sort, I've decided to focus on how AI is already making a difference in oil and gas by sharing four specific use cases. My goal was to stimulate the attendees into thinking about where AI could be applied in their fields of work. The four use cases that I set out are all in the public domain, and they include the use of unmanned aerial vehicles or drones to monitor oil and gas infrastructure from the air and take action based on condition, the use of cameras and a massive image database to monitor facilities on the ground and to take independent action based on events, the use of very sophisticated math to predict plant operational and economic performance to improve operational outcomes, and finally, the use of a language interpretation engine to access huge libraries of unstructured content to support engineering decisions. AI raises a number of management issues, and I suspect these issues will hinder the adoption of AI in the industry. And so what are these issues? Well, in no particular order, here's what I see as the critical issues that hinder the adoption of AI in oil and gas. Number one are high hurdle rates for funding. Now that the industry has reset its cost structure to match its revenue model, returns to the industry have achieved the levels where the price of oil was at $100 a barrel. As a result, producing assets now drive very high returns, which tends to drive up the hurdle rate for all investments. This makes sense. Anything that yields a return that is less than drilling another well should not be funded, following shareholder value theory. However, high hurdle rates crowd out innovation in new areas, like applying AI and other digital solutions to the industry. One super major has revealed that their hurdle rate for any digital investment must be $1 billion or more in either improvements in cost or growth in revenues. Next is offsetting economic performance metrics. A very significant pressure on CEOs, driven by boards and shareholders, is to convert balance sheet assets, or reserves, into cash as quickly as possible. Not only do these assets make no money sitting idle on the balance sheet, but the existing producing assets generate less value each year because of reservoir decline curves. This economic pressure gives drilling programs priority over all others. These performance metrics crowd out initiatives and investments that could produce equally strong returns. A lack of understanding of AI specifically and digital more generally amongst management and boards blocks receptivity to these suggestions. Next are skill shortages. Following the 2014 price collapse in oil and gas, and with uncertainty when or if prices would return to their previous highs, oil and gas companies embarked on their normal playbook to cope with commodity price downturns. Capital was slashed, price concessions were extracted from vendors, and employees were dismissed. Some 300,000 professionals have left the industry. There's little appetite in oil and gas to add staff back given the uncertainty, and even less to add skills in areas that are technology-centric rather than hardcore oil and gas. Meanwhile, the demand for AI know-how has accelerated in many industries, leading to skills shortages in key areas related to artificial intelligence and, importantly for oil and gas, the field of data science. Next are data management practices. AI consumes a lot of data. In fact, the more data, the better the AI engines can perform. But not just the volume of data, but the accuracy and timeliness of that data. Oil and gas generally does not have the kind of robust data culture that we would see in other industries. There's usually no C-suite owner of data, and data isn't viewed as a balance sheet item. It's an expense. Field data is still horribly manual and paper-based for many companies. The low prices demanded of service companies robs them of the capital necessary to improve data quality from the field. And data silos inside companies prevent the kind of data sharing that the digital industry takes for granted. Automated data measurement devices have been viewed as too expensive, and many producing assets lack the kinds of automation that other asset industries, like utilities, aircraft, and manufacturing, have in place. Early AI trials will stumble on data issues. Next is the risk-averse culture. The culture in oil and gas places strong emphasis on safety, reliability, operational excellence, and environmental sensitivity. Another term for this culture is risk averse. Oil and gas is distinctive in how slowly it embraces change, usually waiting for some courageous outfit to try something different and prove that it works. 
usually over a multi-year time horizon. Change must be nearly perfect in its implementation and effect, and tolerance for ambiguity is low. This risk aversion is applied to all change uniformly, not just those changes that demand it. And there's a clear preference for products that have little implementation uncertainty and very easy adoption. For the most part, artificial intelligence is none of these yet. Next are supply chain restrictions. The technology companies that make up the oil and gas supply chain have exploited the industry's risk-averse nature by convincing the industry of the merits of walled gardens of technology that are proprietary, not open source, and with few interconnectivity options. Creative AI solutions that originate outside the industry or beyond the normal supply chain or need to interact with existing technologies struggle to gain traction. One super major is even using a defense contractor to design its next petroleum plant to achieve more openness in plant automation systems. And finally, hubris. There's been few, if any, fields that have not benefited from AI, but there's a clear risk that the early adopters will be forced to come to grips with the fact that AI is inherently better at some tasks than humans. This makes AI a hard sell. No one wants to admit that a computer could run the assets much better than they can. One artificial intelligence software vendor has told me that the biggest hurdle they encounter is simply convincing some grisly veteran with 30 years of experience managing an asset that AI can better his performance at all, let alone by 10% or more. So how do you get ready for AI? Well, here's just a few of the actions that forward-thinking companies will consider to move ahead. Number one would be to tilt the playing field. Since hurdle rates block innovation, Change the hurdle rate for AI projects to encourage trials. Set aside specific budgets for AI that cannot be allocated to other ventures and force specific targets for AI, such as reduction in cost or improvement in productivity, and hold managers accountable for delivery. Next is to concentrate where competitiveness gap is in fact the greatest. AI may be implied in many aspects of oil and gas, but receptivity is probably highest where the competitiveness gap is the greatest. So focus on areas that manage or improve CO2 and methane emissions, for example, or improve the cost of operations. Next is to design a data czar. With data so critical to AI success and digital more broadly, set up an executive role responsible for digital and give them real clout to influence data sources, data management, and digital investments. Next would be to build capability. Take a page from Woodside and create a small AI team focused on driving experiments and value creation using artificial intelligence. Leverage the ecosystem of vendors and consultants to build that capability quickly and equip the team with the tools to do the job. And finally, twist the culture. Highlight your early AI adopters and over-reward their efforts, regardless of results. Oil and gas is not the first industry to struggle with adopting new ways of working. Just watch the movie Moneyball, a Hollywood flick about the 2002 Oakland Athletics and their unconventional math-based approach to assembling a killer baseball team. AI is going to be the Moneyball story for oil and gas. If you enjoyed this podcast, be sure to subscribe to the show. You can find more episodes of Digital Oil and Gas on Apple Podcasts, YouTube, Spotify, and Stitcher, or wherever you listen to podcasts, or just visit jeffreycan.com slash podcast for more. If you have a minute, please leave a review on Apple Podcasts and tell other people about the show. This helps them discover more great content. Later this year, Jeffrey will publish a book on the impacts of digital innovation on the oil and gas industry. You can keep track of this new project by following Jeffrey on LinkedIn. Thanks for listening to this episode of Digital Oil and Gas. The podcast returns next Wednesday, so tune in then.